guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And today I'm going to talk about Convicted by Aletha Romig. This is the third book in her Consequences series. I will link all my reviews for both of the first two books down there in the description and up here in the corner. Top one is Consequences, bottom one is Truth. The series is a mind fuck. If I had to give a definition or a small little phrase to this entire series, mind fuck. Yeah. I do want to try to give a very brief kind of overall summary of the first book for those of you who are interested in the series and have seen me on Goodreads just freaking out, to put it lightly. Um, it is about this woman, Claire, who was kidnapped by this man, Tony, and held captive. Very captive captor situation. But it's, you know, appearances aren't as they seem. Hint, hint, wink, wink. For all of you who have actually read the first two books, you know what I mean. But there's a lot more going on to this, and they have like flashbacks and flash forwards, different ones throughout the series. Um, but there is a lot more working behind why she was kidnapped. It's not a simple answer. That being said, that's about all I can really give you as far as like an overall summary, because I really don't want to spoil what happens in the second book, which is my favorite of the series, or what happens in this book. So if you haven't read the first two books, you should go away now, but I am going to talk about non-spoilers for the third book. I mean, I used to despise Tony with a lot of, a lot of fire. What's the phrase I'm thinking? A lot of fashion. I really did not like him. And then I completely fell for him in the second book. And I don't know how that kind of thing can happen. And it did. And I think that's why I especially love this series is because I was right there along with Claire. You just, you hate this guy so much. And then stuff happens all the way through that second book and I somehow managed to fall for him right along with Claire and a lot of the time that doesn't happen I either automatically like the character or I see where it's gonna go and I did not see where this was gonna go and so I think Claire is the character that I, that I understood the best out of pretty much any book I've ever read so there's a lot of back and forth with Harry and back and forth with Claire and we find out with the teasers and I'm not sure if it's at the end of book two but we find out who the man on the beach is. That scene isn't specifically put in there, but we figure it out. She really ties together Harry's purpose in the book. She really ties together Phil's purpose in the books and Claire's and Tony's and Catherine's and Sophia's and Derek's and everybody's. She really neatly ties everything together and gives each thing enough attention to where I feel satisfied with how it ended. I feel like because there are so many little nuances in which I can say, this is this great possibility or that is a possibility and y you just you theorize throughout this entire book and that's what makes it so Enjoyable. It's like a roller coaster and you just are so sure of one thing like, For a good portion of the book and then something else happens that completely discards your previous theories that you were so sure on and It's just a roller coaster and there are twists and turns and in this book I didn't even see 90% of them coming I'm going to jump into the spoiler section now because I have a lot to say I want to talk to you guys about it. I've been really excited to film this review. I slept on it. I was going to film it last night at like 1 in the morning, but I decided to be kind to my neighbors and not, you know, be yelling into my camera at all hours of the night. And it gave me more time to think about it. So I'm going to jump right into this. And if you don't want any spoilers, which you shouldn't, because it ruins the experience of these books, I will see you guys later when you have read it. So, bye. So Aletha Romig asks the hard questions. Like, is the phrase, I'm sorry, really going to repair everything that's been done? Is it? There's so much speculation to what we think or who we think this mastermind behind it all is, right? And I think most of us have put it together by the end of the second book that it is, in fact, Catherine. That woman has not one redeeming quality throughout this entire book. I, could, I couldn't find one, and I generally search for that kind of thing. I'm, so I think the only question I really was left with that I kind of could answer by myself, and maybe it's just I'm so desynthesized. If someone witnesses someone's death or kills said someone, then are you that traumatized? And I feel like just because I'm so desynthesized to all of this, then I feel like, oh, no big deal. Walk in the park. I mean, if I'm going to look at this in a very realistic real life perspective, which I generally do with this series, then I understand how Claire was in that mental state. But my thing is with this, yes, she thought for the longest time and the journals were proved right at the end that she thought that she killed Tony. But if she didn't black out and she kind of vaguely remembered it at the beginning before she had the problems develop and stuff, she would have known that she only shot Catherine, maybe thought that she killed her. That would be, you know, a presumable next step to and she honestly for the longest time I thought oh she's fake she's not faking it and I like that because I feel like 
That would have been so pretty little liars if she was faking it. So I'm gonna start off with Tony's plane crash. It was all this very big deja vu moment of what happened with Simon. And see, we are led to believe very intentionally, I think, that Tony was the one that did that to Simon's plane. But then even with Tony's conversations with Claire when they were in paradise, I'm still thinking, okay, he did this, he definitely did this, because they had a big fight about it, right? Oh my God, when we, find, we found out about it being Amber, right? That's Harry's sister, and that was where Harry's whole story was really tied well. Throughout the book, I was kind of questioning, what's Harry's purpose in this? Like, I get he's FBI, which we found out now. Yeah, that was a big thing. I was kind of questioning, other than being, like, the one that Tony would talk to, what his purpose for, like, the his perspective chapters would be, other than to really help us understand that there's a lot more going on than what we just think. But he built this case, and it ended up incriminating his own sister. And maybe his chapters was because we then felt this great sympathy for him. But so the whole planned plane crash thing with Tony, I was like, okay, so he planned this, and then that clearly leads to him have done doing this to Simon. Have done doing this, all right. That was about the couple chapters when I was just, my mind was left, my mind was right, I was everywhere, and I could not decide what theory fit. The FBI made it perfectly clear he was going to be protected from this undisclosed threat. How he chose to accept that protection was up to him, incarceration or temporary vanishment. Although the agents offered a minimum security prison at, with many liberties, incarceration didn't sound appealing, even if it was, as they said, for his own good. Tony chose option number two. Of course, Anthony Rawlings wouldn't take their offer at face value. Being a true businessman, Tony negotiated the terms of his disappearance. So it really was the FBI, and I loved that that was a really big incorporate, incorporation, is that the right word? Incorporation in this book. Oh my god, there was this one just a brilliant part that just had me in the <gasps> shocked face and just the emotions were everywhere. And I have it's a bunch of notes that I have saved, so excuse me looking down because it's a lot. So there's this part where Catherine explained that she manipulated Claire and Tony both because manipulation is knowing your opponent's wants and desires, their weaknesses. That hands down is favorite part of the book because, oh my god. She knew that isolation in jail was her biggest fear because she just, she craved human affection and she was terrified of isolation and she knew, Catherine knew that sending her there, because I'm gonna get to how she actually did send her there, if you guys remember, she then sent her that box incriminating Tony. She knew that Claire would want nothing more than revenge because she was in her absolute worst fear situation here. So, fast forwarding to the ends that ties into this better. Catherine is the one that poisoned Tony's coffee. Remember how we, I think most of us thought, okay, this is a setup or Tony did it, but he honestly was like, I almost died. But Catherine is the one that did that because she has these certain herbs that if you take a certain amount, then you die. And there are only specific tests that will detect that kind of thing. And not like the general overall like blood test thing. And gonna, again, jump to the end with this. Catherine also killed Nathaniel because when Nathaniel was in jail, he had vitamin de deficiencies, remember? And so then he was on different medications that, for that and depression. And they created dementia-like um, symptoms, I guess. And Catherine thought he was losing his mind and then they were like vo voiding their marriage. And so what did she do? Killed him with that same herb. And she, and she did that with Tony's coffee and then framed Claire for it because she's a fucking genius. I think Tony's chapters are my absolute favorite though because he was funny. I don't know, again, because I haven't read these books in a while, if he cursed as much as he did in this book and the others, but I liked that. Just, it was the perfect little sprinkling of fuck. I don't know, I just, I found his chapters really enjoyable, and he was just, like, a darkly humored guy and was a smart ass, and I liked him a lot more than I have in other books, actually. Okay, so there was one point when they were in paradise still, and Tony asked Claire to wear her little black satin sleeping mask while they had sex, and it was like this symbol of trust, right? She had these memories of back when she was his captor, and she just couldn't do that, okay? And so then, what did he do? <laughs> My heart melted. Um, he then wore the mask, and it was like this big symbol of trust and vulnerability, and for Tony to give that, it just was this really, really, really big character development scene. I just, I couldn't. That was the spot in which, oh, it set up the rest of the story for how Tony was going to behave. And I just, one, felt it was so weird for Tony 
but I just, I just, I can't, I was a puddle, I was a puddle. So you know, at the very, very end of Truth and I was just like, oh my God, Tony is going to do the same thing he did with Claire to Sophia. In actuality, what's going to happen is Tony was going to tell Sophia about Catherine being her mother and tell her everything that she's done. I was just like, sweet baby Jesus. Okay, so her hair is now gray and roots are obviously showing. How long has she been in there? And I just had this really big sinking moment because the worst thing I think for characters is not like another character's death or them ultimately not ending up together. It's this idea of wasted time. That is the biggest, oh, sinking feeling for me in any book. So we're led to believe a couple different things when it comes to Claire's parents. So Tony was planning to kill her parents, but hadn't gone through with it yet because he wanted to secure this whole scholarship thing for Claire because at that point he was like stalking and obsessed with her. But then something happened to where it was basically Catherine doing it because he hadn't got to it yet because I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, there's a lot of details in this that I'm afraid I'm like misspeaking so tell me if I am, that there was um, the herb poison thing in their system that Tony wasn't actually the one to have done it but he was going to. So the question that we've been asking ever since Consequence is why did Tony kidnap Claire? Well we got a straight out answer. He told Catherine and convinced her that there were fates worse than death, so he ultimately kidnapped her and took her because he was obsessed with her. And see, Catherine obviously was not pleased with that. <laughs> and Tony's sweetness throughout this, it just, it made me, like, want to hug a puppy or something. <laughs> okay, so when Claire's water broke and then Tony just fell to his knees and he was just like, you promised you'd be okay, and I just, I couldn't. And then we fast forward three months later. Nicole is the name that they chose, Nicole Courtney, and I just love it. Then Tony confronts Claire about leaving the United States early and she's like, no, 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 we had a deal one year. And then he explains that Catherine has then contacted Emily and John and they found out that Emily is pregnant. And of course, Catherine knows that too. So then she somehow manages to get Tony to agree for her and Nicole also to go with him to the United States. So when Tony slapped Catherine after she basically said that, oh yeah, that plan that went down, Brenton was on it too. Uh, he slapped her and I'm just like, if there was ever an appropriate and acceptable time to slap a woman, it would be with this bitch. So Claire goes into the house with Nicole, your little three month old, you stupid Claire, stupid Claire. And then of course runs into Catherine because of course. And then there's all this drama and then Tony's in the room and Phil's also in the room and then the gun happens and Claire gets her hands on it and she shoots and then she's just like, and all three of them drop to the floor and I'm just like, so then when um, Meredith and Courtney explained to Claire that she had not killed Co Tony and that she had not even killed Catherine, she just shot her and Catherine is actually in prison, I was just like, thank you for the five almost mini heart attacks, Aletha. I hold you personally responsible. Oh my God. So then because Claire is doing better, um, there's a whole bunch of little technicality stuff and it's a, it's a lot of information that we get downloaded with the, pa the last chapter and a half or chapter or two. So then Nicole is three years old at this point, right? And then Claire gets released because since Tony is out of jail, he is her next of kin. And then Tony gets this thing in his head because like I said, the stroke of conscious thing, that he's no good for Claire and he wants a divorce. But I swear, when they met Nicole, I just... <laughs> okay. Let's take a moment. Um, one, for a child character, really well done. I hate it when there's like the half sentences and the incompleted things. Like I know they're three, they don't actually speak fluent sentences, but right there at the end, I was getting seriously nervous about how this was going to end. Cause I'm like, what? <laughs> you guys aren't together. And they were fighting at one point and she felt like Claire felt like she was rejected because Tony's like, no, I want a divorce. And she's just like, well, you know what? I'm going to move on from my daughter and I can't live in this fantasy. But then she gave Tony her stories that she wrote in all of her notebooks. And oh my God, it was so eloquently put and perfect. And I fell in love with that. It was just beautiful. It was like the perfect summation. It was, just, oh, I just loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I can't put words to it. I loved it. And then from reading those, he questioned, after all that I did for you, and you remember so clearly, and it was like a reminder to him, you still love me, question mark? And she does. He explains that he wanted to protect her and divorcing her seemed like the best way because all he's ever done is hurt her. And she's like, no, I want my happily ever after. And you were, you are my happily ever after. And not those words, because I said it cheesily, but there was talk of happily ever after. And let me just say, I love these last little words right here. Gripping his shoulder, she whispered, 
don't disappoint me. There will be consequences. Overall, I loved this series and I love this book. I think Truth is still my favorite just because it was that really big journey of I hate him and now I like him, what? I'm happy with how it ended. There was no nacho cheese dripping from the pages, which I love because I hate nacho cheese in the books of the pages and that made no sense. But I wanna know what you guys thought of this series and your favorite parts from the book, your favorite characters. I personally love Phil so much and that his little, oh, I just, I fell for him so much. He's, oh, yeah, yeah. Can't believe I forgot to wear my I Heart Tony pen because I do heart him. I was worried about not hearting him, but I still heart him, so all is well. So I will see you guys later next time on Bookworms Talk, and I really hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you for my next review, which will be on The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. And I'm already a wreck. So until next time, bye.